Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 297.5. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 296 to 301. Hey, in this trick, we want to expand on some of the ideas we saw in 297, take those ideas into a, a more complicated uh, formula here where we have two extra criteria. Now there's two main points to this a video. One is we want to see how to, in a formula, reference varying columns of data. Second, we want to see that when you set data up in database or Excel table or Excel list format, the analyzing formulas are much easier than when you don't set it up in proper database. Notice we have field names at the top and month is listed just as a regular element in a field for given records. But here, this table was set up <clears throat> not that way. It has the two criteria, sales, rep, and product, but the January, February, and March were set up this way. Unfortunately, there are lots of spreadsheets set up this way, um, and sometimes we have to deal, of, deal with them. Now, notice we have, um, here's our criteria, sales rep, product, February. So sales rep, product, February, right? So we have one, two, and there's a zero there. But notice here, same thing, but because it was set up with database, we have February listed twice here. We still get the same answer. It's two. We want to add those and get two. Now, um, this formula right here, this is some ifs, and we, I've done lots of other videos on this, but that's what you'd use for that. Or database, I'm, I'm sorry, a D sum. You'd have to have your criteria set up that way, or even some product if you didn't have those. Those are much easier formulas than the ones we're going to look at now. All right, now here's the setup. I'm going to do uh, two different formulas, uh, one with a 2007 function and one with a 2003. And our goal is we need these two criteria, so if we already saw that, and we need to somehow reference this column. All right, I'm going to uh, try and blow this up a little bit bigger. So our first formula, we're going to use sum ifs. And sum ifs is in 2007. It is not in earlier versions. OK, so that's not working. Equals sum ifs. Notice it have it as an s on the end. And it's great because uh, it has a sum range and that criteria range, criteria one, and there's lots of criteria. You're not stuck with just one criteria like sum if. Now, the trick is the uh, sum range, that's where we actually need to just get a certain column. And so we're going to use our trick we learned in this one using the index. So index. And the array we want is the whole array. Right? Because index can look through a table array like this, and if you tell it a row and column, it'll, t it'll get the intersection. But watch this, comma, and then we get our row number there. If you put a 0 here, you're telling index, forget it. I don't want an intersection. I want you to find a whole column. So now I hit comma, and where is the column number? Well, we need 1, 2, or 3. And so to get that, we'll use the match function, M-A-T-C-H. The lookup value is going to be this month right here, comma, the lookup array uh, is this right here, one, two, three, comma, and then zero, because we want an exact match because we're looking up words. Now, we have our reference. Zero tells it, forget it. We're not looking at rows. We just want a whole column, and this will tell us which column. Right now, it'll give us column two, which will give us that value right there. I'm going to close parentheses on the index. And I could actually highlight this and show you that it actually did get just that by hitting the evaluate key F9. And got one, zero, one, one, one. So this one right here. Control Z, because we want to keep that there. Now, the criteria range, if I can very carefully without wrecking my formula come to the end here. Oh, that's hard. Comma. And now we need our criteria range. Well, the first criteria is this, so we just highlight this comma, and then I'm going to um, get my criteria. So I click there. Then I type comma, and criteria 2 range comes up. I think it's up to 64 we have now. We get our criteria range 2, comma, and criteria 2, which is right there. Close parentheses on the sum if, and then enter. And sure enough, it got 2. 
Now let's look at the alternative method. I'm actually going to scoop this index because we can use this little uh, uh, index part in our formula here. If you don't have 2007, then you use the sum products. And we need to have some arrays that will multiply them. The array we want is we want to have a series of trues and falses. So I'm going to put double negative. That's like a, it, it converts the trues and falses to ones and zeros. So you know, just like a double negative, right? It comes out to be a positive. All right, and then open parentheses in our first test is this range right here. Is that equal to the sales rep? Close parentheses and then comma, double negative, open parentheses, the second range, equals this criteria, close parentheses. Now, why do we use double negative and comma instead of just multiplying? Because multiplying would work. Because in larger spreadsheets, this uh, double negative is a lot faster. Now, comma and the final array we want, which is just a column, right? Because we want this column times this column of trues and falses times this column of trues and falses. So I will paste my index. And then close parentheses on the sum product and enter. And sure enough, there we go. Now let's uh, change some of these inputs and see if we can get it to change. Sure enough, that worked. Product 1, looks like we have still some zeros. And then how about sales rep 2? Uh, still a zero. How about sales rep 3? Uh, still a bunch of zeros. It's giving us the right answers, though. OK, well, we'll go back to February. There's, there's a 1, so they all give us 1. Now, uh, there's a couple other versions. You could do that one right there with multiplying. But again, it is slower. I actually did a 60,000 row uh, test for all these formulas. And they were dr dramatic how much faster the top two were than the rest of them. Even this one was a lot faster than these ones. Uh, this is another method. You could use the indirect function which takes this, uh, you have to name it. And there's other videos I've shown how to use the indirect or this one. But again, this one uses the offset to get that column. It just takes a lot, uh, it's a lot faster calculating using this index trick with a zero right there. All right, we will see you next trick.